Howdy all you delicious people. I am here today to review Finding Bliss. So I have kind of seen movies like this film. Uh, like I've seen movies like Late Bloomer or I've seen uh, kind of films like this movie kind of reminds me of the movie like The Editor for some bizarre reason. Uh, the Editor goes into a much more like comedic route or a much more horror route than this movie does. Um, but like something about this movie, like I think I have seen, uh, other movies that are just like this. Like I think, uh, like there is some movie that kind of feels like exact, an exact like copy and paste of this film. And like eventually I think I did review it, but heaven forbid I actually know what the name is. Like I know it has something to do with, uh, with like Romans and like they have a whole entire like scene of like these P O R actors doing this Roman scene with these women. And like the entire time this girl is forced to be a director in this movie and she can't like, she's coming up with code names for everything because she can't actually say the legitimate words so they have to come up with code names for her to say everything. And then eventually she is to just use code names still for every bit and piece of this because she can't actually say the actual words. It's kind of a, in familiar territory. But as you can also tell, I am going to start spelling out certain words during this review. Like S-E-X or P-O-R-N-D industry. Because really YouTube doesn't like certain people to say certain words. Certain magically delicious words would cause YouTube just be like, Oh no, no, you shouldn't have reviewed this movie or you shouldn't have said this or you shouldn't have whatever because red flag of stuff. Like a lot of times it comes down to I cannot actually describe uh, certain scenes that are to go on in this film just because of what YouTube would have this movie be claimed, or this review would be claimed to be. So we're just going to skirt around a lot of stuff because I think this movie could be perfectly fine to be able to do that. <laughs> because I'm, I'm just kind of very, I'm kind of just creatively like figuring out a way while I'm going through this review to skirt around uh, not actually having to say certain portions of this film, but you will eventually, while going into an app called Tubi, T-U-B-I, will completely understand why I completely avoided mentioning some bits and parts and pieces that go on in this film because there are some people that, let's just say, don't have exactly clothes on in this film. So... This movie is about a girl who is to be a editor. And it seems that this girl is desperately trying to find some editing job. It seems that eventually she is going, like, she's been just kind of living off of, like, skin and bones for the longest time. She desperately just wants some kind of job that will get her into the, uh, into the film industry somehow. So... Eventually, Jody is to ship her script off to everyone. Uh, like, everyone, it seems like she is to end up, uh, like, spending more on postage stamps to mail off her scripts and to mail off all of her, uh, her information and her resume out to everybody. And she spends more uh, money on stamps than she probably does on her rent. So... Jody is to be desperate to try and find anyone that is going to be interested in wanting to make her film. She is forcibly an editor, but she is also wanting to put it put together a film, and that's what she is sending out. So Jody is to put this uh, this script out, and eventually someone is to respond. Someone who is a part of the PO are an industry uh, <laughs> but 
But they like to call it something else. They like to call it the, uh, like, adult entertainment instead of the other word. So, uh, so Jody is to be involved in this job that she actually does not want. Because this girl is to showcase the span of her life. And how sometimes there uh, were moments that she was to get the or try to get the guy that she wanted and it didn't work out. So she so she was just kind of upset about that. And then eventually when uh, later on, like she was eventually getting used uh, by men that eventually all they wanted was SEX from her. Eventually, Jody is like, well, that's not what I'm going to want to do then. And so Jody just kind of pushed herself away from anything SEX related to the point of now she's being thrusted, metaphorically speaking, right into SEX like things. And now she's getting to the point of just going like, oh my God, well, like now I'm basically having to forcibly be consistently the watcher of this and the consistent and the consistent editor of this because I need to get my foot in the door somewhere and it seems like this p place play pays really well but also Jody has another scheme up her sleeve while this is to go on as well so but eventually this really starts to work out it seems that Jody eventually starts with uh starts working with uh, Jeff Drake that it seemed that he had uh, some kind of movies that are of real promise but eventually he ended up just having to uh, eventually go into just doing uh, some P.O.R.N. movies just because really they were like they were paying the bills and he could not get work elsewhere so uh so within this movie, we have Jody that has this story that she wants to do. She wants to uh, put together. And eventually when Jody is to start getting money from this editing job, she wants to make this film a reality. And eventually we'll see where this story goes with that. But with that, um, yeah, so as you can see, like, I kind of try to skirt around trying to say certain things, but it actually seems like this movie actually does have a pretty decent cast. Like, Jamie Kennedy is in this movie, uh, Denise Richards is in this film, um, uh, Matthew Davis is in this film. Matthew Davis! Everybody knows who Matthew Davis is, but... Uh, like, yeah, um, Kristen, uh, Johnston, who's from Third Rock of the Sun, like, or, yeah, from that, from that show, like, Ron Jeremy is in this movie. Uh, like, we also have, uh, uh, Gary Marshall is in this movie. The guy from Hocus Pocus, he's in this film. Uh, like, yeah, the guy who, who played, I think, the devil in Hocus Pocus is in this movie. I guess funding it or whichever. Um, but yeah, so like I thought that this movie was really interesting to eventually have this girl that has kind of pushed away her ec ecstasy is now having to have to confront it and is now having to realize like, well, like I should really try and try some things and like, well... Uh, someone had given me an awkward present of sorts, and maybe I should just take this present and just use it. Uh, like, to me, like, this movie does kind of remind me a little bit of the movie Ugly Truth with uh, Gerard Butler and uh, Catherine Heigl. Yeah. So, but with that said, let's get into spoilers about this movie. Uh, because I think it's about that time to go into spoiler time. Spoiler time. It's about that time you to spoil this movie. So, uh, so in the very beginning of this movie, we're basically showing like the entire lifespan of this girl. So, in the very beginning of this, we are to have this girl who is to 
consistently uh, plays spin the bottle with her friends, desperately wanting to kiss this one boy that she has had her eye on, I guess, for a number of years. Sadly enough, uh, Jody is to consistently spin the bottle for a number of years, and it is to never land on the one boy that she has wanted to kiss. Until... Once she is to get very much older, and Jody has kissed so many other men in this uh, spin the bottle thing, that eventually once she does arrive to this one boy, this boy is like, dude, I don't want to kiss you. Like, you're a hoe. Like, you've kissed too many women. Like, or you've kissed too many other people. I don't want to kiss you now. So, Jody's heart was broken at the moment of her not being able to kiss the one guy that she wanted. Like, I actually do like this movie. Like, I like this girl that, like, was very kind of closed in about the whole, like, SEX stuff. But then eventually, like, she, like, really starts to get in it and really starts to, uh, like, really starts to dive in it and, like, becomes more confident after the fact. Like, it kind of goes in the progression of, like, where I had to go eventually in a former YouTube life. Where I was just like, I don't know what I'm going to do. So I guess I'm going to do this direction. And then all of a sudden, like, it really started to work out. And it really gave me, like, a confidence or what would be close to a confidence. I'm just saying, like, you know what? I'm just going to review anything. <laughs> like, I don't have a problem of reviewing anything. Anything whatsoever. Um... But yeah, like, and that's what made me, like, feel good about doing any number of things, talking about anything openly. So, Jody is to eventually uh, not be able to kiss the one boy that she has always ever wanted to kiss. And so, she is to eventually just be into a lot of other just a meaning, meaningless relationships down the road where... Every single relationship was to lead her to not find the one guy that really did care about her. All this guy really cared about was getting in bed with her. So Jody is like, you know what? I'm done with the whole like me being with men kind of thing until I find the right one. Until I uh, until I just stall, until I just uh, until I just wait for my shining knight character or what would be just a good enough guy to me. So, so Jody is to, I guess, just uh, really from all that life experience, Jody is to put that into a story and put it out into the world to try to get anybody to want to make a movie out of it. But Jody keeps sending all these things out to everyone and uh, spends so much, uh, like, stampage and whatever to get this movie made, and nothing returns back. So, Jody had went to uh, school to be an editor, and so Jody is like, well, like, there also just seems to be no real, true, legitimate jobs for editing lined up all that well either but eventually there is a company uh that is to answer uh jody's uh jody's uh thing that had been sent and this company is called grind which is <laughs> a a certain industry kind of company and so Jody is to do an interview with this company, the Grind Company, uh, with uh, Irene Fox. So Jody is to do this interview and realize what this company actually is. It is a parody company that is to uh, do movies that you would probably be fairly familiar of, but they slightly tweak or change the title. But then also really let you know exactly what the movie is actually about by the cover of the case or the Blu-ray or DVD case. I'm assuming during this time period of this movie, it's probably DVD. So 
Jody is like, oh my god, I don't know if I want to be editing for this kind of company. And Irene, as well as everybody, is just like, well, just give it a try. Like, if anything, if it doesn't work out, then you could just be, like, desperately clinging to try to find some other job that you won't find. Uh, so, Jody eventually goes on to the Grand Tour with Gary. Gary, that is very outspoken, and he is to say any number of things that just pop out of his head. And... Eventually, that lands, like, Gary... Like, I was rooting for Gary. I actually liked Gary in this movie. Uh, like, Gary was kind of just, like, uh, like mentioning anything that kind of came out of his head. And all of it kind of has, like, an innu innuendo. Or it has some kind of S.E.X. like, matter of it. But then Gary tends to frequently apologize to Jody for saying a number of these things. Because, like, they just come flying out when he used to be working in this company. Because of how consistently he is just, like, in it. Like, inside of it. Like, consistently, like, all this stuff is to be in his face every single day of his life. So, Jody, by, uh, by seeing what is going on with Gary, Jody is really already understanding, like, Maybe she will not be interested in this job after just going into hearing what Gary is to have to go through here. But so Jody goes and she is to uh, go into her editing bay and she is to uh, have to uh, work with Jeff Drake who evidently she used to mention, wow, like, Jeff Drake, wow, he went on to do, like, these big, uh, these big movies. It's like, well, but yeah, now, like, he's kind of just left to just kind of do these kind of films. And just because, like, the money just kind of works out. Jeff is trying to, like, put on a much more, like, tasteful kind of film, where, if anything, like... Yeah, like, the the P-O-R-N of it is, yeah, that's put it out there. But, like, Jeff is trying to, like, have some kind of good quality writing as well. So, at least, of this movie. So, at least, like, it seems like they're trying. Because eventually when uh, Jeff and his people are to do a table read about this... Uh, Jeff is going with his writer and hearing what his writer is to come up with. And Jeff is like, God, this is garbage. Like, you guys aren't even trying. Like, come on. Like, it doesn't even feel like you're trying to write this all that well. And so, like, Jeff is just getting frustrated with the writing staff and everything. So Jeff is trying to go with Jody to help him write this film. And... And try to put something together. And so Jeff is trying to put Jody in the very deep end of things. And so Jeff is forcibly having uh, Jody uh, edit a hardcore movie themed film to push Jody into the deep end of things, of if she doesn't like this kind of of thing that eventually she is just going to have to live with it. She's just going to have to come up with some way to like uh, swim in this deep end and, and keep coming up for air. So Jody is to edit this film. And all of a sudden it seems like the actress of this film is starting to talk to Jody. Like as if like Jody is having these like bizarre sh sequences of like her all of a sudden having this dialogue with this actress that is to be part of this scene. I guess that's a way to just kind of like get your, like to try to escape from what you're actually seeing by just kind of like creating a scenario where like, like there is some kind of like false, like sense of like security where it feels like the, the thing that you're seeing is like with you on this journey, I guess. 
of you watching this film. So Jody is talking to this actress of this movie. And so uh, Jody is trying to edit this film, but she's having a difficult time. We also find out that it seems that Jody ends up getting uh, mailed a certain present, a present with let's just say, certain kind of XEX toys involved. Uh, so Jody is to just be kind of like, like, who sent this? Like, who sent this to me? And so Jody at first is asking maybe if Gary had to send it out. And Gary's like, no, that was actually Jeff. That was actually Drake who sent that out. So... Uh, so eventually Jody is to go to Drake and say like, oh my God, you were the one who like mailed this to me. And Drake was like, yeah, I did it as a joke. So what? Like, if anything, loosen up. <laughs> like, it's really what Drake was trying to get at Jody. And really it's the whole scene in The Ugly Truth where Gerard Butler's character is giving uh Catherine Heigl character uh some very uh vibrating underwear to wear uh like that kind of feels like what's going on here but uh it seems like Jody didn't have to take these things didn't have to use it she could have dumped it all in a trash can but eventually she does go and she actually does use one of them and she does feel better after using one and so bravo to her so, like, not saying it in a condescending, like, I was like, yeah, good for her. Like, at least she explored or experimented or whatever. Uh, because she wanted to, like, I think she realized that it's like, well, no, like, I think I should just loosen up. And really also, it gets to the point where Jody, while watching one of these films, and while she's, like, editing one of these films... She is to realize that maybe she is to even loosen up so much that she is to go and uh, and to give herself a little play while watching a movie. So, uh, so anyways, so pushing on here. So Jody is to really like be doing well at this job. She's really giving uh, Drake some pointers about her movie and about her movie that she's working on with him it almost gets to the point to where they're kind of co-writing this movie together and so jody is also going you know what i'm gonna make my own movie in this studio the movie i wanted to do and we're not going to do it in a a rated x kind of way no it's going to be like a normal film that is to be done in this studio because immediately when jody is to come into the studio studio she is to think about that she can film her movie in here without anybody noticing or without having her to pay any kind of fees. So Jody is to all of a sudden start casting people in her film and to just start like putting this movie together without even asking the grind studio. So eventually like Jody is filming this movie in this studio and like this is to go on and so all of a sudden uh we have jody that is filming this movie in the studio and jeff is to walk in and say uh cut <laughs> like i'm sorry but this yeah no <laughs> like like i didn't know that you were so like crafty jody wow so all of a sudden, uh, we are to have both Jeff and Irene have Jody come into the office. And so Jody is like, or Irene is like, well, yeah, like, you know what? It seems after this stunt that you pulled, you're going to be editing the movie that you're doing for Jeff for free. And if anything, like, uh, if you want to keep uh, going on and doing any more filming in with this movie in this studio you're going to be paying certain fees and jody's like well i don't have any money for those fees and so irene is like well then if anything you have three more weeks to 
film this movie and get it done. And I never want to hear another word about it. <laughs> so Jody is now going like, oh, okay, so I can probably finish up this film and it'll work out. Well, uh, it seems that uh, the casting person that is working with Jody, that is Jody's best friend, uh, tells her that every single one of the actresses that uh, that they had hired no longer want to be a part of this movie because they didn't realize it was in the grind studio and they didn't realize that they were actually in maybe rated X like sets. So none of the actors want to be a part of this film anymore. And so Jody is just like, well, then we got to money ball this thing. If anything, we have to now go and cast any of these people that are actually working in the studio already in this film. And so uh, Jody's casting agent is like, wait a minute, like every one of these are certain kind of stars. And Jody's like, yeah, I don't care. I just want to, I just want to film this movie and be done with it. Like I want to have this movie go out. So, uh, so, they end up casting all of the people that were already X-rated performers in this movie to eventually be in this film casted as certain people. And so we all of a sudden are having these uh, actors and actresses, let's just say, double dipping to the point of they are also doing Jeff's movie as well as doing Jody's movie and eventually there's a problem that arises while Jeff is trying to do his film while Jody is trying to do hers. Uh, because there is one scene where one guy is just going at it with this girl and she is completely and utterly asleep while this guy is just giving it to her. And so Jeff is to all of a sudden pull Jody aside and say, you know what? You are completely derailing my film. So if anything, how about any of the people that I need on certain days, you will not have. <laughs> like, you need to, uh, like, stop filming tonight and we need to adjust how we're going to do things from here on out. Or otherwise, we're just going to lose half of our actors because they're going to be falling asleep. Because uh, Jody's working at night and Jeff is working during the day, doing what he's doing. So, uh, so eventually they figure all this out, but eventually Jody still needs her lead. And so Jody eventually goes out and casts this girl that is coincidentally the same exact actress that uh, Jody had quite possibly seen before. So, Jody casts this actress and eventually is to go on to do this movie and it seems to be going ex exceptionally well to the point of Jody being so proud about this girl who is to be Bliss and like she he's or Jody is just so happy about it or uh Laura whichever this girl is cuz she plays two different roles so Jody is happy about her star actress, let's just say, and like everything is going like perfectly of how she planned it. And so eventually there is at some point that eventually uh, Jody is to go to her parents and tell her that she's putting a movie together and her parents are like, oh, great. Like I knew you would have some something that like you could really like slap your name on and say that you did and like like I can't wait to go and uh like see all the 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 company movies that uh like can we find all the movies that your company is working and and like see what you're working on and and Bliss or and Jody is like no because if anything, you're going to find out eventually that, like, yeah, this company is not exactly the cleanest company because uh, her father is mentioning stuff about selling uh, her soul out to people. And luckily, she didn't have to do that. But that's when eventually she'll find out or they'll find out where Jody's actually working. And then they're like, yeah. 
So, uh, so eventually there comes to a birthday party thrown for uh, Jody because it's her birthday. Uh, Jeff uh, tries to throw it together as an appreciation for all of Jody's hard work. Eventually, we have uh, Brady uh, or or Gary uh, that is to eventually kind of end up with Jody's like best friend, her 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 person that uh, that was casting the movies and helping Jody out. Eventually, Gary goes, and it seems like both of their uh, kind of past like are aligned for them to want to be a couple with one another, and it seems like everything works out really well. So eventually Jody is to uh is to eventually go and have her film get all done and eventually uh like they have a party and eventually everything is going well and uh, eventually Jody's parents are eventually coming to the studio to see what she's doing and they're kind of in a very much disgust of what uh, Jody is basically uh, a, tied to is basically a certain industry film. So they walk off in disgust and eventually when Jody is to hear some of her other friends uh, that have gone on to do other movies, uh, like actual on certain kind of industry movies, they are kind of uh, giving Jody crap about that, and eventually Jeff goes to Jody's defense. Eventually, both Jeff and Jody at some point in this movie are to share a jacuzzi together, and it seems that they are going to seemingly get intimate, but Jeff is to pull away, just going like, Dude, I'm not going to be that guy that is just going to sleep with everybody. Like, that's not going to be me. And that's what I'm proving right here, right now. But eventually Jeff is to go off into the uh, the editing bay. And eventually there is a woman that is going to, uh, like, sit on top of... Uh, of Jeff. Jeff naturally assumes it is actually Jody, but he is to find out it is actually someone else. Jody is to walk in on uh, on Jeff and this girl going at it, or making out really, mostly. Jeff uh, tosses this girl off of him because Jeff assumes that it was actually Jody and not this other girl because he couldn't actually see her. And Jody doesn't believe that, and so she is to go and walk off. So, uh, so Jody's film is now done, and Irene is to say, like, well, hey, like, great, your movie is done, but sadly enough, because of what all happened with you recently with Jeff, that whole kind of thing, like, we don't want you actually to actually edit this movie here like you need to edit this movie elsewhere and and Jody's like well that's perfectly fine I can go and edit this this film somewhere else so Jody is said at the film and to eventually push put it out and so uh eventually Jody is to go and talk to one of her uh previous uh actresses that she had on her movie that was also making out with Jeff. And so uh, the actress comes clean and mentions like, well, yeah, like he thought that I was you. And if anything, like uh, Jeff, I think, was actually saving himself for a certain kind of woman because like, really, Jeff has had a reason for not wanting to be with anyone, even though a number of us have tried. And Jody's like, well, why? Evidently, Jeff had lost a wife of his a number of years ago, and so it's kind of very hard for him to want to be with anybody else. So he's just kind of waiting for that certain girl. So... So... uh. 
Because what had happened was, is that Jody had gone to a screening of her movie, and it seemed like everybody laughed at it, everybody loved it, but not everyone showed up. And so, that's when Jody was to talk to one of her actresses of the film that I guess just didn't show up because she was busy. Because uh, evidently there's a whole award show that was going on at the same time as... Uh, as Jody's uh, movie release. So Jody goes on and scrambling to make it to this adult uh, award show. And so she can't actually get into the award show, but eventually she kind of sneaks in as someone else. Someone else being the girl that she was to uh, have be her lead actress before in her film. And so... Jody is to kind of sneak on stage while uh, Drake is getting an award for his film. And so Jody is to kind of sneak on stage and and Drake is to introduce Jody to everyone as like basically being this like a difficult person to work with or just being this kind of like like he goes through all these names and stuff like that. And like and Jody's like, well, you know what? I think they get it. Uh, and so eventually both Drake and Jody eventually kiss. And that is to kind of like show the end of this movie that uh, eventually both Drake and Jody are going to be together and things are going to work itself out. And plus also Drake had just gotten an award for his movie. And so everything is going to work out swimmingly. And I'm assuming that these people are going to work together for the rest of their lives. Um, but yeah, like, there's something about this movie that I did like. Uh, and plus, I don't know, I just, I kind of like these kind of films. Like, uh, like the Hugh Jackson movie, like Deception, where eventually, like, some guy is just an accountant. And eventually he ends up becoming uh, a person that it seems that people, that especially women, are just going like, hmm, let's look at him twice. Like, I like those kind of movies where eventually, like, a person is to eventually uh, get out of their comfort zone or to get out of this uh, rut of theirs that is to eventually end up having people wanting them at some point. Is a movie that I kind of like. So, with that said, I am going to get out of here. If there's anything that I probably forgot about or skipped around about, there's probably a lot to, to have still said during this review. But I also wanted to make this review fairly short, so I'm going to get out of here. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.